Hi everyone and welcome back to the Brick Buds. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You join me today for a review of the Loop Coaster, set 10303. So this is the new ride in the Fairground collection for this year. So if you've already got the existing roller coaster, you might be wondering why you might want to get this one as well. Apart from the fact that it is a beast, so if I show you the full height, it just keeps on going all the way. I mean, it's extreme. I mean, f further than my backdrop goes. Look at that. So it is a massive, massive ride. And is it worth it? So first, some particulars on the set. There's 3,756 pieces in this set, 11 minifigs. Now, my very first criticism comes from that detail at the top. Because this is the loop coaster, yet I believe the lettering there says LBP. And I do understand why they've done it, because you've obviously got the loop down here. And so that the double O is trying to represent the loop. But it just looks like it says LBP. But there's an easy fix for that, so we'll look at that later on in the video. But it just, it really bothers me. I think everyone's laughing at that part. And it's just a shame that they couldn't see it or decided against changing it just so that they had the sort of loop effect in it. I don't know if it was worth keeping that in. The colour palette is vastly different from the previous roller coaster, so that one was a white and red colour scheme. And I thought that looked pretty pretty good in the fairground that we've got. This one's I think it's kind of a Marmite colour scheme, so Ian loves it. He thinks it's really good. He's a big fan of the dark blue. I actually really hate it. That's what put me off this roller coaster so much, is the, the colour palette. Um, I'm not sure which it is, whether it's the navy, like the dark blue, or the bright light orange, I think that is. I'm not a fan of the, the yellow colour. I think I would prefer the, the standard yellow, the ones that for minifig parts. And I'm thinking I would probably like it better if it was the accent colour, so this light blue with that yellow. So kind of like the... Uh, colour scheme on 31119, the, the Ferris wheel, the creator 3 in 1 Ferris wheel. I think I prefer that much better to this colour scheme. And maybe you could have used the dark blue in, in the sort of stripe up here, that sort of area, but it just doesn't do it for me. But like I say, Ian thinks it looks really good. So you can't please everyone. So there's loads of small details in the set, and I will show you a few of those. So you've got some funny parts. You've got like the balloon that's stuck under the the roller coaster I think that's quite cool you've got the little sign at the start that tells you that you can't go on if you're a squirrel but then if you look on the pictures you know how when you're on a roller coaster you always get a picture taken the fact that those are all upside down makes me laugh as well because it's obviously taken at the point where you are you are upside down but there's a picture of a squirrel on there so clearly a cheeky squirrel has got onto this ride so one thing that is missing from this ride is an exit so you go through the entrance up the stairs through the little gate through the turnstiles and onto the ride when you get off I assume you go back the same way and there is no clear segregation so I can imagine it could get a bit cramped on the path. I really like the way they've used the roller coaster track pieces to make the shelter as well for the entrance I think that's quite a clever detail. So I'll show you the ride itself going because there's a point that I want to make about that I have to do it via the motor because Ian's already removed the handle in his motorization so I will give you a quick shot of that. So if you're paying attention you know once it reaches the top it's pretty much three seconds before it hits the bottom again. So it's a very 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 short ride and I think you would be very disappointed if you went on it just the once if you paid your money to go on the roller coaster and that was all you got. But they might do it several times, I don't know. And also, to reset it, especially if you're turning the handle, you've got to get the, the cars back down, or the, the platform that the cars are on, the track, back down to the bottom. And that does take quite a lot of turning. So there's a lot in the reset. And I think that's why you really do need to motorise this set, because turning it by hand is just a bit of a pain. So let's have a think about the build process on this set. Obviously, with the set this large, you are going to need a lot of space to build it. Not just like to display at the end, but also to manoeuvre all the parts because you build sort of the upright pieces and you need the, 
the space to get those on before you then put them upright. They're quite long in, in themselves. Also, unlike the previous roller coaster, this isn't really an easy slip, split if you want to share the build. So Ian and I always build together, and with the other roller coaster, there were two books. You could build one half, the other half, slot them together, and it meant that you were making really good progress, but both also having a really good time. This, it, it was not like that at all. One big thick book and there wasn't really any easy independent steps that you could do without the others. That it, it was always waiting for the other person or having to literally do each step together. The build itself started off very similar to the roller coaster, the previous one, because it's all mainly like little columns uh, with axles down the middle. Ian did say that he found it slightly less painful than the other one though, so I don't know if they had slightly tweaked the technique, but it's, it is very similar. But then as soon as you start building sort of the upright piece here, um, it's quite different. And you've obviously got some unique new roller coaster pieces to do these loops here. So that was quite fun to see. So they have thought about how you motorize this set though. In the book, it shows you just grab one of their motors they list all the part numbers that you will require. So 808015 and 88013 is what they reckon you should have. And you can see they want you to put this on the top of the mechanism. But if you were noticing when I used it, we've gone out the side. So let's go have a quick closer look down there. So this is the part where you would put the powered up motor. There's some pins there to attach it on. Ian's just added, we don't use the powered up motors, we've got the circuit cubes that we use all around our fairground here and at the moment you do have to hold this whilst it's going because it's not supported or attached anyway. We're also using a ridiculously long axle because that's all we had in the room when we were motorising it. So I think we're going to do that slightly tidier but Ian reckons up here just makes it look very bulky so he's going to try and put it out the side I believe. So the way that the roller coaster works is the handle pulls this up to the top of the platform and there's a counterweight on the other side that drops down. Now Ian was wondering whether you could, instead of having a counterweight there, have a second piece of track and some more cars. And so instead of the counterweight dropping, those would drop and then they'd come back up again. And you just need to add in some sort of mechanism for swapping the two pieces of track over. So he didn't have any idea what that would be. But that's what he reckoned would make it a better model because that way you aren't having that downtime. You're constantly getting cars going. So one goes up, goes around, next one goes around. The, every time they're going up, one is coming down. Up, down. It's just, there's no wait period if you do it that way. So I think that would be really nice and I don't know if we're going to work out how to do that. But if we do, we will let you know. I will quickly improve the logo. And as you can see, that's a very simple swap. Just take off three pieces, two one by ones, one one by four, I think it is, and then just replace it with more of the macaroni pieces. And suddenly you've got a much better named piece there in the loop coaster. So no fairground ride would be complete without those side builds that you get to just add that extra detail. So you've got some really good ones in this one. You've got the little balloon cart, so on a nice little bike. You've got the animal balloons as well as lots of brightly coloured balloons in there as well. Different um, size handles. This is quite a short looking handle or string, I guess it is. Um, you also have a little pump at the front there. For that to blow up those balloons and that goes well with the fact that there's that balloon under the roller coaster we've got the hot dog stand which itself looks like a hot dog and um, they've done that a lot in lego but this is quite a sweet little one and empty buns waiting for these sausages to cook and the sauces on the side little umbrella to provide some shade for the server and then this is the bit that confuses me is the difference in price between a plain hot dog and one with sauce on. I think that's some very expensive sauce. You've got a pretzel stand here on like little wheels, um, seven for a pretzel. And I'm not overly keen on this because the pretzels do not really sit nicely in there. So they're essentially just looped onto a stick at the back 
at, but I just don't feel like they display well inside the cart. Um, but maybe that's accurate. I, I genuinely have never seen a pretzel cart at a fairground before, so maybe that's just how you do it. And then, of course, a bench with that pesky squirrel that's clearly not allowed on the rides, but has been. And this detail, the sticker here, is quite nice because you get uh, like a little park map. But for someone who likes things to be exact, this won't work for us because we don't have this setup in our city. So we do have the haunted house, but we don't have the tiny uh, Ferris wheel in our house, in our fairground. We've already got the the larger Ferris wheel, and the, just the layout is wrong. So I kind of feel like it would be a bit confusing, but. Unless you look really close, I don't think it matters. Um, it just makes it a bit more fun. Okay, let's take a look at some of the mini figs we've got. And there's quite a lot of fun new torsos in here. So I don't think I've ever seen this torso here, but it might be from like, the little birthday cake set, actually, thinking about it. But this is quite obviously the balloon seller because of all the balloons on his top. Really lovely purple legs. No alternate face because obviously he doesn't have the space for it with the hat but a really nice pink hat as well and the printing is right at the back of the torso as well the hot dog guy he is obviously sweating quite a lot by that, that hot dog grill and again no extra face but a nice red hat this time and then the pretzel vendor she's got the um torso that i like to use for the fairground i've got quite a few of those so she fits in quite well i don't know whether i'll swap the hot dog guy out to to match i don't know why he has a slightly different one maybe because he's actually cooking as opposed to just selling and again no extra face but she does have the hair and some cool rather big blocky glasses i quite like those the ride attendant this is obviously meant to be a lego land park so all of the ride attendants have the lego logo that was the same in the other roller coaster and all of the fairground rides seem to have that apart from the haunted house which is more themed and she has a hearing aid on the side although i feel like the hair does cover it a little um no alternate face again this guy has some really cool ha hair but um it's gone wonky so i'll include a picture so you can see that but he, he's it's the sideburns that i really like on this guy and we've got some really good um colors of hair going on so we've got this blue hair here and i really like this torso as well the like fancy top underneath she's got a scared face so she can obviously go on the ride and then this one with the red hair i think looks nice too nice little denim jacket and again not a scared face but an alternate face at least maybe she's tried the hot dog or maybe they've just told her it's nine nine dollars or whatever it is for oh, nine studs for the hot dog um with sauce and she's like really um so yeah that's a good one Roller coasters are good for all the family, so even if you've got grey hair, you're allowed to go on them. That's what I'm saying. Um, and obviously this one did, because she's a bit scared looking. This girl's hair is pretty pretty, pretty pretty. Um, quite fancy hair. So all the plaits and things. And a nice top as well. And she doesn't seem to get scared. I like the sort of bag around her. Like cross body bag the hair on here as well is quite good those sideburns also make it look pretty pretty good hair and they must be going on the roller coaster with that face and then a small child who i'm gonna guess doesn't fit the minimum height requirement which is probably why he's not looking so happy there um maybe if he puts something in his shoes he can have a happy face because he's he's cheated the system but i wouldn't recommend that people so all in all, I do think this is a really excellent set. I would change the colouring if it was up to me. I would recommend it because we built it over three sessions and in between each session, there was a playable element to it. So you build it to the point that you can start playing with it pretty much. You just don't have the lift part um, till the very end. So we had a lot of fun with it. I don't know whether I would recommend it over the other roller coaster. Obviously, this is the one that's now available. So get this one but I think I prefer the other one and I'd quite like to just try and munch them together to get the loops into the other one and I don't know whether that would look a bit odd though with the two different colour schemes so we're just gonna have a play with it and see how we can get it in there but it's a well thought out set it's motorised well if you tweaked it a little bit just to be able to do the 
two car sets of cars i think that would be pretty cool but i, I don't know how complicated that is going to be so stay tuned to see what we eventually do with this set and how we integrate it into our fairground if you want to pick it up yourself then make sure you use our affiliate link below just to support the channel because that would be super helpful and if you want to see more of our lego city fairground then i'll link up our fairground playlist at the end and don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss an update see you later